Great. Okay. Uh, I'm going to hand out homework set two here. Uh, a lot of you have already picked this up, but just uh, cycle it backwards. And we'll also put it up on the web page for the course. This will be due next Thursday. Uh, homework set one is due today, and you have just hand it in here, maybe here, or when we take our break in the middle of class. Um, I, because of calls, I said some people could hand in their homework late, and uh, that's gotten a little bit crazy because Monday's a holiday. So I do say this, hand in homework set one before class on Tuesday. So and there, so this is a rare thing where we slip the the date uh, on which we collect the homeworks from Thursday to some other time. But this is for the people who are taking the quals. How many people are taking advantage of that? Good. All right. So either hand it in tomorrow or uh, before class on Tuesday, because on uh, Tuesday we'll probably give out the solutions to homework set two, uh, homework set one, and we'll hand back the graded homeworks the following Thursday, that is seven days from now. All right, last time we looked at Jensen's inequality. It said the expected value of a convex function uh, of something is greater than the function of the expected value. And this has all sorts of applications. Among other things, it shows the relative entropy is always non-negative with equal equality. If and only if P equals Q, that is, if the two distributions are equal. And it says the mutual information, which is the distance between the joint and the associated product, is non-negative. Uh, it shows that that is greater than or equal to zero with equality if and only if uh, X and Y are independent. So it's very sharp. And then as a consequence, we find that the entropy of X, given some side information Y, is less than or equal to the entropy of X. So the side information Y never hurts. Well, never is too strong a word. It doesn't hurt on the average. That is, Y may cause uh, the entropy to increase, but on the average, if you look at the values of y with probability mass function p of y, you see that the expected entropy decreases. And finally, we showed that the h of p is concave in two dimensions, well, for one variable, uh, the entropy in bits looks like this. And in three dimensions, it looks sort of like this. Here are the sides, and then the overall thing. <laughs> All right, take this, and then shear off the sides. The sides are concave, look like this. The overall thing is concave. All right, today, I want to look at Fano's inequality. The data pro uh, definition of Markovity, the data processing inequality, and the notion of sufficient statistics.
and bottlenecks. And then uh, next time, but maybe we'll start this time, AEP, the asymptotic, asymptotic equal partition property. By the way, somebody has indicated to me that they've solved the red hats, green hats problem. Remember that problem. Uh, seven prisoners are uh, told that they're about to have hats put on their heads, either red or green, with equal probability. And uh, they can work out some scheme of what to do, but when the hats are put on their heads, they cannot communicate with each other at all, and when the jailer comes in, they have to tell the jailer what hat is on their heads, or they all die. But the way they tell the jailer what hat is on their head is um, they ha one person has to raise their hand, or more, people have to raise their hand, and uh, if no one raises their hand, the jailer kills them all. And all the people who raise their hands then they have to simultaneously announce the color of the hat on their head. And they all have to be right, all the people who raise their hands. Otherwise, everyone's killed. Okay. And uh, miraculously, although each person only knows whether his hat is red or green with probability a half, when you do this experiment, the probability the whole group survives becomes seven eighths. And it's based on the Hamming single error correcting code that was. Uh, Problem one on homework one today. All right. Let's start with Fano's inequality. It relates probability of error and eight. and entropy. Suppose I have a horse race. There are M horses. And I have to guess which horse wins. Well, I see P1, P2 through PM. I'm going to choose that horse with the highest probability of winning. My probability of error is 1 minus P max. What if the entropy of the horse race, which is minus summation PI log PI, um, is small? Is the probability of error small? And conversely, if the probability of error is small, does that mean the entropy is small? Now, why do we need to relate probability of error and entropy? It's because when we <clears throat> have a communication system, we send something and then that turns into a signal and it goes over and is corrupted by noise and re results in a random output y, and then from y we guess what was sent. That gives you a probability of error. But all of our calculus of information only relates the entropy of x and the entropy of the input x given the output y. 
by the, the difference being the mutual information, the mutual information being less than the channel capacity. So what we have is uh, a, a characterization of how small the conditional entropy of the input given the output is, and we want to turn that into a statement about the probability of error. That's why you need it. In fact, Shannon's original 1948 paper assumed the obvious that uh, if the probability of error was small, the conditional entropy was small. But Fano, when he taught the course in 1952, four years later, found it necessary to fill in that little relationship detail. Uh, which he did, and it's been called Fennel's inequality. Uh, now, PE is the probability that x hat, that depends on y, is not equal to x. That's the probability of error. So we go x to y to x hat. And we know immediately uh, from previous considerations that if the entropy of x given y is zero, then x is known once you know y, and so the probability of error is zero. And similarly, it goes the other way, too. The probability of error is zero. Uh, then I know what x is given y, so the conditional entropy is zero. Great. So, we wish to show that if the probability of error is near zero, that implies that the conditional entropy of y is near zero. So, more formally, we show the following theorem. For any estimator x hat such that x or two on. So the estimator is a function of y, and we have that the entropy of the probability of error plus probability of error times the log of the alphabet size of x is greater than or equal to h of x given x hat, the entropy of x given the guess, and that's greater than or equal to the entropy of x given the side information y on which we base the guess. And we note that PE small 